Hi, Paul from Power Wash Store here. We're going to show you how to rebuild a one horsepower Gould's booster pump. The three quarter rebuilds the exact same. The only difference is this has 17 stages and the uh, three quarter horse has 14 stages. So um, this particular pump was sent back to us by a customer. Uh, he started to try to do the rebuild process himself. Uh, the issue he was having is he was able to get the barrel loose, but he couldn't get it off the slide. And what was happening is, I pulled this out of the garbage here, uh, here is an example of some of the uh, diffusers as impellers. You can see that this particular diffuser was rubbing so hard on one of the uh, impellers that it actually embedded the plastic in there. You can see these were uh, beginning to break apart and just fall apart. They're extremely brittle. Um, from use and, and, and sitting and, and that's not uncommon uh, eventually over time the uh, SH breaks them down uh, the more you rinse them though the longer uh, if you rinse them daily and use the booster pump for rinsing this typically uh, they'll last a lot longer um, and, and not have to do this but uh, what was happening is these little plastic pieces and these edges were breaking off and wedging between the uh, diffuser and the impeller and the barrel itself so we got to a certain point where it wedged with the, the bowl that sits inside here uh, between the surface and we couldn't get it off. So what we did to fix that, uh, what I did is I just made a little tool. I just took a T and uh, screwed it into the end here. Um, you want to use a metal T versus plastic because you'll probably just plastic, break the plastic off. Uh, once we got to a certain point, and I'm not going to unscrew it, but once I unscrewed it, it, it pulled the barrel off to about here. This particular barrel has nothing inside of it right now. Um, we pulled it off part, as far as I could, and then I just took a mallet, and then I hit it. And what that did is that broke the barrel loose from uh, what was inside here. Uh, basically took the end clip here, and this is what's left of it, uh, part of it. Uh, the end clip, and it ended up just breaking, and then the whole barrel slid off. Um, along with these little plastic pieces and stuff that were wedging it. So once that broke loose, the barrel came off and we had a bunch of the diffusers and impellers and stuff wedged inside of there. So what we did is um, I basically pushed them back down into there, cleaned some of the plastic pieces out, and then just tapped it on the ground like this and let them slide out one at a time. And I had to do that multiple times to get all the debris and stuff out. After that, we took the whole barrel um, and we actually soaked it in a mild acid bath um, to get the rust off the surface. You can still see a little bit here on the surface and to clean out the inside. Now you see a little bit of surface rust in there and then I already put some uh, some magic lube on the threads so we're putting it back together. Um, but you can see that there's a little bit of rust in there and that's fine and perfectly normal. Same thing here, there's a little bit of surface rust on here um, as well. The bowls we took out and soaked them in a little bit of acid and you'll see some of them still have a little bit of rust, surface rust on it. Again, that doesn't matter. Uh, we reassembled a bunch of these already. Uh, but we're gonna go through the process here of, of, of rebuilding this. Now on this particular pump here, you can see they started out, they have four shims on there. Um, I didn't pull the shims off the end here. And what you wanna do is you wanna take a straight edge um, and, and hold it against the shims here to the point where um, you're gonna hold it against the uh, the input intake manifold on each side of the intake manifold and go up to the shims and and you can I don't know if you can see it or not but what what I'm doing here is I am you can see how the intake or the the shims actually wiggle a little bit so there's a little bit of space in there we don't want that we want the shims to be tight so what we're going to do is we want it so that it needs snug and you can see now I put that fifth shim on there there's no real wiggle in it and if anything, the uh, straight edge we have on there wiggles just a tiny bit, which is fine. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to over-exaggerate that. I'm going to throw uh, two more shims on there to kind of give you an idea what actually happens if you have too much. You can see when I have too many shims on there, if I push tight against the shims, I can actually wiggle it back and forth. And if you look on the side here, you'll see a pretty significant gap um, that, that is there. Uh, if the angle is just right, you can see it. Um, but there is a significant gap there that you can see and you can actually literally see this wiggle back and forth So I'm going to pull those shims back off the two that I just put on there Double check it again and make sure that it's snug and it is so I'm going to pull oh, I pulled three see how there was a little bit of a play in there I thought I pulled two, but I actually pulled three so I'm gonna put that That one back on there. That's nice and snug now the next step is going to be I'm going to take one of my bowls I'm going to take an impeller set it in the bowl and then I'm gonna take one of my diffusers and I'm gonna snap it in. Now these diffusers, uh, 
may be clear, they may be colored like this. We've had some that are come black. Um, they are, I'm told, all made out of the same material, so that's kind of irrelevant as far as that is concerned, but that assembly would always be the same. So if yours are a different color than mine, don't be alarmed by that. So we're gonna put those in there, and we're gonna set that first stage up on there. We're gonna take our straight edge, and we're gonna hold it against that, um, the diffuser there, against the uh, impeller in there, and you can see that it's a nice tight fit. Um, if I put the light up underneath here, you can see that there's no light in between there. It's a nice tight fit. So then I'm gonna go to the next one. Again, I put the impeller in there, snap the diffuser on the outside. I'm gonna put it together, and I'm gonna continue going right down the line and see if they, they meet tight. Now, if there's a little bit of play in there, or a little bit of a gap like that, what we'll do, we'll do another one here. That's That one was fine. We'll do another one here and put it together. And if we put the straight edge on there, and you can see there's just a just a tiny gap in there. Um, I don't know if the light's showing it, but there's just a tiny gap in there. I can see light, a little space between the impeller and my straight edge. So what I can do is I'll take a shim, and I'll put it in there to make up that space. And then it meets nice and tight. There's no wobble to it, and it's a nice tight fit, and I've made up that space. I'll continue on down the line here. And I'm going to put each one together and check each one as I go. There's no space. Go to the next one. There's a little space. And I can do another shim on there. Go to the next one. And do the same thing. Uh, there's a no space in there, so that's fine. I go to the next one and continue on. Now, one of the things that I forgot to do before I started doing this, because I got all excited, is I actually forgot to change this O-ring on the end here. And I want to change this O-ring because the uh, pump that was on here, um, when we had the barrel taking it on and off a bunch of times, it actually kind of, and you can't really necessarily see it, but this O-ring has got a few little nicks and burrs to it, um, so we want to replace that. Uh, the customer had already purchased a new o-ring for it so what we're going to do is i'm going to put this new o-ring on here but in order to do that I, properly i'm just going to pull these stages back off now when i pull these stages off if i do this just like when you're disassembling it you're going to see oop, you're going to see there are the shims in between each stage you want to make sure when you pull it off that the shim will sometimes get stuck on the back of the impeller like this and if you pull it off, it can actually drop down inside there. Now you know what's gonna end up happening is you don't know if that's in there or not. And if you were to run that with that in there, that would actually cause problems and, and, and issues in the future. So what we wanna do is I wanna take that out of there um, so that I don't have, have a problem. And these, snap in, these new ones snap in really tight, so this might take a second. I'm gonna set that aside and get that in a minute. So I'm gonna pull this off and make sure that I don't get any of the shims stuck in the uh, things again, in, in, in the uh, bowls and everything. So I'm gonna pull these off. I'm gonna put my O-ring on. You can see there's two different grooves here. You have an outer groove and an inner groove. That wider inner groove is where this O-ring sits. So we're gonna put that in there. Okay, and then I can go ahead and start reassembling the uh, diffusers. So I'm going to finish putting this together and get that shim outside of this diffuser and come back to you in a minute and show you how to put it on the end of the barrel. We're back here. All right, we're back here. We're going to get this last couple stages on here. You can see I'm at my last two stages. I've been checking as I go along the way. My gapping is really good. I don't have any spaces there. I'm going to get to my last one here. And the gapping's good. Now, I got uh, the little groove here on the end, which you can kind of see it's got a little bit of dirt and stuff in it or stuff from putting it together in there so I'm going to push that back but I'm going to take this last shim here that I got and I'm going to put it on the end before I put that clip in place then I'm going to take my new clip and the new clip actually just pops right on the end here and I just use a screwdriver to pop it on into the groove there we go and you can see that that has been popped into the groove here. Now, you'll see that if I put the screwdriver in the end here, 
so I can turn it, you can see that the actual the impellers will turn independent of the bowls and the diffusers. So they're designed to actually spin within there. Some of these may spin just because of friction, uh, but that is designed to go like that. Now I'm ready to assemble uh, the last couple parts on here. We have our end cap, and this has a guide bushing in it that is used to guide this barrel because this barrel will naturally kind of sag and won't be straight. So what this does is this helps to guide the shaft inside the barrel to keep it perfectly straight within here so that everything spins straight and spins normal inside there. So I'm going to put my uh, end cap and guide uh, bushing on there. I put a little bit of magic lube or, or uh, silicone or uh, o-ring lube on these threads here and on these threads here. And you want to make sure you do that because these are stainless steel threads. If you try to do it dry, what will end up happening is the threads will gall and stick together and you'll get this barrel either halfway on or halfway off and it'll never move again. Uh, I think I have one underneath my workbench here that we did that with and uh, uh, ended up wrecking the entire pump because of that. So now this, you can't see it, but there's typically an arrow here. This is a rotational unit and it does spin um, counterclockwise. So it is a reverse thread. So we're gonna slide the barrel on. And what's nice about when you have everything on there, the barrel actually slides on and guides itself onto the threads really easily. So I'm just gonna turn this and I'm gonna hand tighten it. And I should be able to hand tighten this all the way up and it should actually end up right where it was before. Now you see there's a little bit of gap there. Um, it is tight, so I'm just gonna use my weak little muscles and try to get it tight on here. Um, still a little gap, I got one more turn to go around. And it's probably gonna stop just short of where I can turn it. And that's about as far as I can turn it. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the strap wrench. Now when we use the strap wrench, this is a chain strap wrench. Um, some people use poly ones. Sometimes you can use a real big vice grips. Do not grab anywhere on the barrel. You wanna grab right at the end here where you have the end cap on. And what you're gonna do is link it around the barrel like so. And in this case, I have it set up that I'm gonna actually turn to loosen it. So I'm gonna turn this around to go the other way. And the way this is designed to work is the chain links in there. And when you push down, it actually tightens everything. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna push down. It'll grab here. And the reason we wanna go where this end cap is is because it won't crush onto the barrel onto it because it's got something underneath it to keep it solid. If you do it on the barrel, you'll actually dent the barrel and cause the diffusers and the uh, cups and bowls to get stuck on there. And then you'll ruin the, ruin the pump itself. You'll have to replace the barrel and it costs just as much for a new pump. So we're going to take that and we're gonna tighten it just tight enough so that we get back to where we kind of were originally. We got a nice tight gap here. There's no gap here. And uh, take the strap wrench off. And at this point here, this pump is done and rebuilt and ready for service again. So that is the steps for rebuilding a one horsepower booster pump from Power Wash Store, 414-351-9274.